Well, what's going on, guys? Um, I'm hopping on because I wanted to take this time to um, talk about some of the people in my family, just, you know, people that I thought were my family, friends, and loved ones that were a part of my gang stalking. And the reason why I'm making a video about this at this time is because um, I just, I was thinking over the last couple of days about just all the shit that I've been through and the things that, you know, people have done to me and the, the lies and the, the fake smiles, the crooked smiles and the things that uh, I've endured at the hands of people who utter the words, I love you and who share the same blood as you. And I just got really pissed off. <laughs> got really pissed off. And I was thinking back on whether or not I'd actually made any videos about these people and out at them and exposed them. And, and I, I don't think I have recently, not on this channel. So I want to take the time to do that. And the first thing I'm going to talk uh, about is uh, my aunt, my mother's sister. And how this devil hated my mother. And uh, apparently she hated me too. The role she played in, in my being trafficked was pretty pretty wild. It's a kind of a long story, so I'll just kind of make it short because I don't really want to draw things out. But the thing that I was thinking about was the connection. You know, my mom, she passed away in 2011, and that's when I began being sexually assaulted in the trafficking. And I remember... My aunt, she was very envious of my mother. My mother was gorgeous, inside and out, but she was definitely visibly appealing. And she got a lot of attention. On top of that, she was very talented, very talented. And um, my aunt, gorgeous, beautiful woman. No reason for there to be any envy or jealousy of any type, but it just goes to show you when you when you have a, a soulless, empty vessel, you don't love yourself and you can't love anyone. But when my mother uh, passed away and my attack began, I remember... My mom's last wishes, she didn't want her siblings, those who were still living, to come to her funeral. She made a, a special request for that. And all these crazy psychos show up anyway. Just imagine, you're trying to have a funeral for your mother, you're distraught. And these crazy, psychotic people who have voiced verbally, they did not care for my mother, show up. And I hadn't spoken to my aunt at this point in about two years. Uh, we'd had a, a very unpleasant encounter. And, and typically our encounters were unpleasant because she was always just very hateful toward me. And uh, I imagine it was an extension of the hate she had for my mother. But... I remember her trying to talk to me and trying to have this conversation with me and I just wasn't having it. <laughs> just because like when I'm, I'm down with you, I'm down with you. Especially if it's for a good reason. And so the funeral's done and everyone goes off to their own corners, you know, back to where they come from. And I remember... Um, it's 2000 and, um, 18 
and I'm dealing with the trafficking and the surveillance and the, the attempts on my life heavy, heavy. It was a very dark time. And I had moved out of the apartment that I was living in and uh, I was living in this uh, Wood Spring Hotel. So I thought I'd be safe there, you know, because, you know, there's people around and blah, blah, blah. Um, I wasn't. I was trafficked in that hotel. I was sexually assaulted there um, repeatedly. And uh, I really went through a lot. I spent a lot of money at that hotel so that I can be sexually assaulted. <laughs> Um, so I was, you know, making preparations to leave that state and, uh, to leave that situation. And, you know, obviously word got around because I was being heavily surveilled. I didn't know this at the time. I, I just didn't know what I was in. I, I had no idea that I was being so severely monitored and surveilled. At that time, I had no idea. I knew I was, but not to the extent. And it was at that time when I was staying at the Whispering that I really came into an understanding that I was being trafficked. That I was being trafficked. I was able to witness a lot of those things going down. As far as like the movement, the individuals, the, the, the concierge and just all the things that go along with an organized, calculating situation. So I was preparing to leave, and like I said, I was still surrounded by a lot of people that were involved in my trafficking, family members that I didn't know was involved. And when I started putting the pieces of, of the puzzle together, I was like, I gotta, I gotta get out of here. And like I said, I just come into an understanding of what gang stalking was in 2017. Uh, there was a video, pretty sure you real targets know what I'm talking about, where this ex-police officer was talking in front of a white, um, a white um, chalkboard talking about gang stalking. And, you know, it was the first time that I ever heard it being coined that you know, give it a name. So fast forward to 2018 and I was, you know, planning my escape. And um, I had told my family members, my immediate family members about gang stalking, what it was and, you know, how it operated and, you know, that, that I was suffering from that. And uh, when 